Um, and I moved down to Texas. I'm originally from Colorado and I moved down to Texas and then um, moved back to Colorado for a little while and then moved back to Texas. So around 2005 is when I really started kind of dabbling in, in music. And then in 2009 is when I went in full time. It's, it's been my full time job since 2009 and mainly just playing around the Texas regional areas um, until about, about four years ago, um, a Navy SEAL buddy of mine introduced me to the, a guy that named David Corley who manages Charlie Daniels. And uh, that pretty much took my career to a different level and brought me out to Nashville um, and started touring with Charlie Daniels and Marshall Tucker Band and Travis Tritt and doing stuff with Kid Rock and you know, a, a bunch of really great artists that I've always looked up to um, uh, and then put us more on a national level. So it's just, it's, it's been a long journey. I mean, I've been, I've been at this for about 15 years now. Wow. Did I lose sound? Wow. Nope. We're here. Right. Scott, you're getting, um, you're getting a lot of likes and loves on, on, on our live stream right now. Um, we have one question for you. What's your favorite place in Texas? Oh man, that's hard. Uh, like venue wise or just in Texas in general? I mean, I, uh, I love all of Texas. I'm not a native Texan. Uh, I spent 12 years there, uh, but that is where I started my music career. So like uh, some of the best fans in the world come from Texas. And, uh, but I, I mean, I love, it's such a big state, like geographically. I mean, East Texas and the Pines are awesome. And then you got, you know, uh, the hill country and you got the desert way out West and, you know, the plains up there in the panhandle. And, uh, uh, but I, I really like, um, I really like all of Texas. It's, it's, it's cool. That's awesome. Uh, I'll have to say that, you know, I, I spent most of my time living in the Conroe Montgomery area. So I'm going to pick that. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. So you mentioned Charlie Daniels band, Travis Tritt, the Marshall Tucker band. Um, you, you've played more than 150 dates with them. Um, others like Whiskey Myers and more. Um, and we know that you've been heavily influenced by the Charlie Daniels band, um, bands that you grew up listening to. So can you tell us what it was like to play with them? Um, I'd say every day that I get up and get to do this for a living it is a pinch myself moment. Honestly, like I just never thought that this is where I would be. Um, I would that I would ever be doing any of this. Uh, that I would get to meet a lot of my childhood musical heroes, like you know Charlie and Travis Tritt and Randy Travis, and you know, and and then for them to be considered friends now, you know, um, it's just kind of like I said, I'm just grateful for every moment I get to do this. Um, and uh, having guys like that be mentors to me in this business, I couldn't, I couldn't ask for anything better because they're just, they're just great people um, and great musicians. So Scott, speaking of Charlie Daniels, he was featured on your single American Son. Can you talk to us a little bit about your inspiration for the song and then what it was like working with your idol? Um, you know, first, uh, obviously, being a, a musician and being also a military guy, you know, we have certain, you know, things or values that we, that we kind of hold dear to our, to our hearts. And I still do to this day. Um, and I, I think when I wrote American Son, it was more at a time where like, I really felt like, you know, I, it's okay to be patriotic. It's all right to wave the flag. It's okay to stand up for the, the things that you believe in. Um, cause I feel like a lot of people were getting, uh, kind of, you know, uh, criticized for it or whatever, you know, especially in the artist world and, um, and it's okay to do that. And, it, you know, and, and I think that there's a value system that we hold as Americans that, you know, we haven't always been a perfect country, but like, I think that we've always tried to do the right thing. And I think that that's what's important. And so that's kind of what the song's about is, is that, that perseverance and that never quit never back down attitude that we have um you know it's called american son because i'm a dude and i wrote the song but i mean it goes for the american daughters as well you know uh i think that 
it holds true to, to all of us that held these, these feelings um, that we have. Uh, so I will say that getting to work with Charlie Daniels on that song, I still get goosebumps to this day when I hear that song and his voice comes on. And I'm like, that's Charlie Daniels saying lyrics that I wrote. Like, how cool is this? Um, Charlie's voice is so iconic. Um, I mean, the guy can, I don't know if you've ever listened to his book or, or read his, his uh, autobiography, but if you get a chance, you should download it because he actually narrates it. Oh, you got it right there. <laughs> yes. <Yep. laughs> um, he came into our building um, and did a book signing last year. No, a couple years ago, I believe. And so I, I met him. I told Chief and Julie yesterday, um, he's really special to me because he looks like my grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> he's such a great man. But I tell you what, if if you get to download that, like it's an audible when you're driving across the country and listen to it, he, he narrates it himself. And his voice going along with it, it's just like, it's mesmerizing. So like, uh, like I said, uh, hearing that on, on lyrics that I wrote, you know, I was in high school, this, I was in a high school rodeo team and my buddies and I would drive around in our trucks and we'd listen to nothing but Chris Ledoux and Charlie Daniels. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, years and years later, here he is singing on one of my albums and it's just a, a surreal kind of moment. Oh, that's like a dream come true. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, I see um I see a guitar back there in the background. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that just for show or is that for, for playing? Because <laughs> I, I we like to we love to hear American Sun. I don't know if that's a possibility. Yeah, absolutely. All um, right. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully um maybe give me a hand gesture if this is like if it's too close as far as like if the if it starts washing out uh, musically. Okay. Um, yeah, right here that I'm that we're we're talking through. So hopefully I think that should uh kind of help us out a little bit. Um so yeah, when I wrote this song, and of course my tuner doesn't want to work. It's all right. So when I wrote this song, I thought that I was like, all right, man, I'm onto something here. Like, this is gonna be, um, this is really good. So I sent it to my manager and uh, he, he wrote me back. He said, hey, this isn't good enough. You need to try again. And that was the first time I've ever had anybody tell me that, like writing a song. And so at first I was a little like, a little hurt by it. Like, man, you know, I just spent all this time working on this. And then I sat down with it and I listened to it and I said, okay, if he says it's not good enough, then it's not good enough, I'm gonna do it better. And then so glad that I did because this is the version that, that we came out with. And uh, sorry, I'm a. Uh, my tuner stopped working on me here. is hard as the land is mean This dirt is red from the blood it's seen Raised on a good book, hand on a gun Never backing down the American sun Well I was born from the blood of a working man And fight those who can. Put my hand across my heart, even through the hard times. Get chills up my back when I see your glory fly. This land is hard, this land is mean. This dirt is red from the blood it's seen. Raised on the good book, 
his hand on a gun, never backing down the American sun. I ain't afraid to sweat, I ain't afraid to bleed. Stand alone for what we believe. Rather die on my feet than live on my knees. There ain't no man that's gonna take it from me. This land is hard, this land is me. This dirt is red from the blood it seen. Raised on the good, hand on the gun, never backing down the American sun. From the farms and the ranches, old field hands are ones who turn the ranches. We built these bridges and roads. Yeah, the big rig drivers hauling a load. We're the mason, the cop, the coal miner, the banker, the lawyer, and the firefighter. I'm the man in the shadows who carries a gun. Yeah, I'm the sheepdog, the American son. I am the American son, never backing down, I ain't never gonna run. I am the American son, never backing down, never gonna run. I am the American son, never backing down, I ain't never gonna run. I am the American son, I'm gonna take it to my grave when my day is done. <laughs> so that's great terrific thank you wow hey hopefully, i know uh, hopefully it sounded all right on that you know uh it did sounded cool. great it's really good we enjoyed that it did well i enjoy getting to play for y'all because i don't get a tour right now so i don't get to play for anybody so it's always a treat for me to do it as well <laughs> hey, this, this is a virtual tour i love it <laughs> This is what we're doing. Hey, jo Johnny Olson, uh, he wants us, he says, show us your United States Marine Corps tattoo. Oh, man. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. There it is. And then I'm not taking my shirt off, but I got a big old Semper Fi across my back, too. <laughs> um, a couple of other questions. Judd Ancy asked, where is Scooter now? Where are you now, Scooter? Uh, I live just outside of Nashville, Tennessee, um, a little town called Mount Juliet, uh, just about 20 minutes east uh, on I-40 of Nashville. OK. Yeah. And Ryan Smith. Town. We, we actually got hit. Um, we were one of the towns that got hit really bad by the tornado that came through Nashville. Um, the destruction, the path was about uh, about a half a mile, mile away from my house, and it took out our elementary, one of our elementary schools and our junior high and a lot of local businesses. So uh, we were kind of dealing with that before COVID. Uh, my kids haven't been in school since the beginning of March. Oh, wow. So, uh, and then they've canceled school for the rest of the year. And I've, I've got four kids. Um, I've got a 13, 13, 11, eight and six year old. So it's been a little crazy at the Brown House. <laughs> I bet. You've been, how, but how's, how's the community doing out there? Is, is it coming back? I mean, now with the COVID, it's probably tough. How's the community uh, recovering from the tornado? Man, the, the, the communities out here are great. I mean, I think that's any, anywhere across America, especially, you know, the smaller communities. Are, I mean, it just people help each other out, you know, and, and people are supportive of each other and, um, it, I think that happens in any small town. I think the South is especially um, good at it. Um, the, the, 
you know, I wasn't born in the South. I was, I was raised in Colorado, um, but I've been down here now for, um, you know, uh, 15 years or more. And the whole Southern hospitality and, and just people being kind, is just uh, something that I love. When we first moved out here to Nashville area, I came to kind of scope some things out and I was sitting at a restaurant and the waiter was asking me, they're like, hey, what are, you, what are you doing around here? I was like, oh, my family and I are about to move out here. And he said, he goes, welcome to, welcome to Tennessee. And then every single waitress and waiter in that restaurant walked by my table and told me, welcome to Tennessee. And I was like, that's a cool place, man. I can take this. Southern hospitality. Yep. Gotta love it. <laughs> hey, so we're getting some love on, on your flag behind you. And, and some people were saying they love the display. And Ryan Smith asked, What's the story with Old Glory and Elk behind you? Yeah, so um, here, let me see if I can get a little better picture of that. Um, I actually have a nonprofit uh, 501c3 called Base Camp 40 Warriors in the Wild. And it's based out of Colorado, um, but we take combat veterans on hunting and fishing trips and outdoor excursions all over the country. Um, it's completely paid for. It's just more of like a, of a rehab therapy of getting people out, out in the woods um, for that peace of mind that the woods gives you. That's my peace of mind. Um, I love being out in the woods. I'm a mountain man at heart. Um, and so that's kind of where I find a lot of my, uh, that's where I recharge my battery at. And so that was kind of the whole basis behind it. So anyway, my band is obviously the, this is what it says underneath is the, the official band of, um, uh, Base Camp 40, Scooter Brown Band. Um, uh, some of the board members got that made for us, but we always, we have a, a concert in the summer where a lot of different acts come out and we raise money to go towards Base Camp 40. So uh, it's really cool. If you want to check it out, it's bc40hunts.org. Um, it's open to combat veterans, Gold Star families uh, and all that. So it's, it's, it's a really cool organization. Wow. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you for letting us know that. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll plug it in again at the end. You'll get another chance to plug it in at the end. So let people know right before you go. Uh, another, uh, Wendy Baltiera says, hello. I don't know if you know her. She says hi from the Baltiera, Baltiera hey. family uh, in Melothian. Oh, yeah. I, I, li I lived in, uh, my family and I lived in Midlothian uh, for a couple of years before moving to Nashville. So <laughs> oh, wow. there's, there's good people out there. That's pretty close to us. We're in Dallas, Fort Worth. So Midlothian's just down the road. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I, such a cool little town. Um, we actually kind of weird that we we wound up there kind of on by chance. Um, my sister's sister lives in Midlothian. And uh, so we were always going up there and hanging out with her. And then actually through Base Camp 40, um, I met Chris Kyle and Chris Kyle lived in uh, Midlothian uh, and so he lived about three minutes away from my sister-in-law's house so whenever I'd go out there uh, we'd end up hanging out and then uh, my wife and I ended up moving up there um, you know a little while later so but it's, it's a cool place. Wow wow awesome hey so back um, I know the Scooter Brown band they debuted at the Grand Ole Opry last summer was the American yeah. Sun one of the songs you played there? Yeah, we played American Sun. Um, boy, the, <laughs> playing the Opry is such a wild thing that like uh, you almost forget like that it even happened. Like it happened so fast. Uh, but we did play American Sun. Uh, we actually that was the last song that we played, and we got a standing ovation, which was really dang cool. Um, because I come out on that song and I'm, I wave the flag and, you know, the 4,400 people at the Grand Ole Opry, uh, you know, most people listen to country music are pretty patriotic people. So um, that was a really cool experience. And then we played a song called, uh, uh, we debuted a new song called Country at All. Um, and uh, I think we played another song called Georgia, but I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so fast. But yeah, we played three Opry shows. We played two at the Opry House and we played um, this past December, we played 
the Ryman at the Opry, which was really cool because all the history of the Ryman Auditorium and, um, you know, that's where Patsy and Hank Sr. and, you know, just all the, the people that paid the path uh, played at. So it was pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Awesome. Okay, well, let's switch gears. Um, Scott, in COVID-19, it's put a, um, you know, a hold on your spring plans. Um, how, how are you guys, how has the pandemic affected the band? Did you have any tours scheduled that you're now going to have to reschedule or cancel? How, how is that working for you? Yes. So, um, we were actually, we, we had taken a lot of time off, uh, this, this winter, just because in 2019, we just toured really, really hard. Um, it was a great year for us, but we hadn't taken a lot of time off. And then, um, on New York, New Year's Eve, we, tragically lost our piano player that had been with us for four years um and so at that point the band and i were just like we weren't we had a couple of like one-off shows in january and february but for the most part we just really didn't want to uh, go back out on the road yet mm -hmm. so we were actually really looking forward to hitting it in march and april uh mainly because this is what we do for a living so uh when, when the bank account starts getting sad, you're going, all right, we got to make the bank account and the wife happy, so let's get back on the road. Um, so we were out actually on our first, uh, you know, small little tour of the, of the year uh, out in Colorado. Um, I was nominated for some awards for the Rocky Mountain Country Music Awards, and uh, we had some, some shows that we do really well in markets out there, and uh, that was basically when it all hit the fan. So coming back from Colorado was when the talk really started to, of like, hey, there might be some shutdowns. This is actually getting real. Um, but it didn't hit me until I got the phone call of saying, hey, the rest of your March dates and all of your April dates are canceled. Mm -hmm. uh, that was pretty tough because one, I needed those dates. Um, and we needed those dates just for our own sanity uh, because the band we hadn't played hardly at all in months. So um, that's where we're at right now. We still have a couple of shows in May that are holding on, but I just don't see them happening. Um, I think best case scenario is that maybe we get back in some of the smaller venues in June, um, but I really don't know what's gonna happen. I mean, like, let's face it, we're, we play guitar, we're not curing cancer. So like we're entertainers, we're probably gonna be the last ones to get back to work um, because of the, of the nature of what we do and the nature is that large crowds come to what we do. Um, so I just don't have any idea what's gonna happen. Um, I wish somebody would just tell me, hey, <laughs> we're not gonna play shows until September. Roger that, I'll make a plan. I'll figure it out. I'll be ready to roll in September. But right now they could say, yeah, your shows are not canceled next month. Or they could say your shows are canceled for the rest of the year. I have no idea. Um, so I think that's the thing that's really affected me the most. And the gyms shutting down has been driving me crazy. Yes. I do not work out <laughs> yeah. myself at my house very well. But I love going to, a, to the gym. So, uh, that's probably honestly the thing that's really getting to me the most is that is one of the workout is just bar. not the same right <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not the same at the house you know i'm like freezing milk jugs and you know, having, <laughs> doing curls with leaf springs from pickup trucks you know makeshift weights yeah yeah for sure we hear well, you on that you mentioned your six-year-old and eight-year-old hey that, that happens too you know <laughs> get my wife up in there <laughs> awesome well sorry um you know sorry to hear about your loss uh you know condolences to you guys for that and hopefully hopefully that things can start to turn around and and um, entertainment business can get back on track and life can can start to seem more normal to people hopefully coming soon um so you know, I think it's, I think it's one of the hardest things for us um, in times like this is that like, like I'm fully aware that my job is 
like we are the escape, right? We're the escape from everybody else's reality. Like we're that, that show at the end of the week that they bought a ticket for, that they're looking forward to going and see because their boss has been giving them crap or, you know, their significant other, their kids have been driving them crazy or they just have been having a bad day or they just want to go out and drink a cold beer with their friends and have a good time. Like we're that escape from people's everyday reality and just to, to lose themselves in that moment. And I think that's one of the hardest things right now for us is that we're not able to do that. Um, because that's what we do this for. I mean, like it's to connect with the fans. Like the fan is the only reason why we get to continue to do what we love to do for a living. Um, and most of us artists are extremely grateful um, for that. So, um, you know, that's what I'm really just bummed about is like, especially when people are going through hard times, like we're the outlet and we're not even able to be an outlet right now. Um, so I really hope that when this all kind of passes, um, that we can all get together and play music and sing it and, you know, not worry about getting sick. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have faith. I have faith, Scooter. We're, we're going to get, we're going to overcome this and get back to normal, a normal state. hundred percent. That's what, that's what we do. Hey Scott, you um, you guys have been working on some new music, is that right? Um, you have yes. a song that's going to debut next month. Can you tell us about "Leave It to a Woman"? Uh, yeah, one. I'm super excited about this song. Um, so I have a I have a publishing deal in Nashville, and uh, I write for you know for other for other artists. You know, you write and they, they plug your songs and pitch them to other people. And I wrote this with my friends at Banner Music and it, I kept going back to it and going, man, this is a really, like, this song just really hits me. And I showed it to my wife and my wife was like, oh my gosh, love this song. Like, and really when this, when COVID kind of started coming up, I had a feeling that we were going to get, you know, just kind of locked down. And so I went back and I was like, you know what? let's try to let's release this during this time we have nothing else going on like let's just put it out and see what happens and um i just think it's such a cool song because it kind of it starts off it's a little jokey you know towards uh you know a, a dude and and, and um, maybe some of his perspectives of 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 uh you know being late or you know just can't find the keys or whatever but it turns into more of an anthem to like how powerful the love of a woman is and that you know uh, leave it to a woman to make you feel like a man like she's the one going to be behind you she's the one behind every successful dude there's a great woman that's didn't let him quit you know or keeps pushing them and that's 100 percent my wife uh, would not be where i'm at today without the support of my wife um, we've been together for almost 15 years. I've uh, been married for 14 years. And, um, you know, she's 100% one of the reasons why I get to do this. And, and, and I am where I'm at. So uh, it is available right now for, for pre-sale or pre-save or whatever. Um, uh, but it does drop on May 15th. And I can't wait. It's going to be fun. Hey, so Scooter. Yeah. How about, how about, could we get a sneak peek? Could you? You got that yeah. guitar handy? Can we hear it? Yeah. Is that um, cool? Let me see if this other guitar is in a little better tunage. Oh, you're just you're just surrounded by guitars. <laughs> <laughs> I <have> no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I might get a little loud on this one, so hopefully that we don't break up. I'll, I'll sit back a little bit. This is called uh, Leave It To A Woman. First, you gotta get your water. You gotta hydrate. Leave it to a woman. Leave the tank on me. Show 20 minutes late. 
But she was looking for a kiss Leave it to a woman Spend an hour getting dressed Come out looking beautiful But still swear she's a mess And leave it to the way she'll change her mind Because she can Drive you crazy by changing your plans. Leave it to a woman to lay her heart on the line. Leave it to a woman time after time to make you whole, to heal your soul by holding your hand. Leave it to a woman to make you feel like a man. Leave it to a woman to make you want a little more. Dig a little deeper to make you better than before. Leave it to a woman to say what she means. Make you feel tough, but still weak in the knees. And leave it to a woman to lay her heart on the line. Leave it to a woman time after time. To make you whole and heal your soul by holding your hands. Leave it to a woman to make you feel like a man. To a woman, lay her heart on the line. Leave it to a woman, time after time, to make you whole and heal your soul by holding your hand. Leave it to a woman. She loves it. Uh, Ken Morse from Dias Air Force Base in Abilene is watching, and he liked it too. Cool. So, Scott, you have been using social media to reach your fans during the pandemic. I actually caught your quarantined and unplugged session from your oh, Facebook cool. page a couple of weeks ago, and you had made it a family affair. You had your wife screaming for you, and then your daughter and your son came in and performed. How have you all been coping together? And then what does this time to slow down and be with your family mean to you? Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's pretty cool because, so when I'm not on the road, I'm, I'm at the house. Um, and then my wife also, she works for a, a network marketing company called Plexus. And so she can work from her phone, work from wherever. And um, so when I am home, this is kind of normal, like, this is just longer than usual. Um, <laughs> our our youngest go to elementary school, and then once they hit junior high, they get we take them out and homeschool them. Okay. Um, and so our oldest has been home for a year now, and then our second oldest, uh, she starts homeschool this year. Um, so it, you know, it's just 
we're used to being around each other all the time. And we're one of those families that thrives off of it. We, we love uh, the chaos that, uh, that comes along with, you know, uh, six people, two dogs, three cats, and whatever else may be going on over here. Um, but it's just been nice. I think that like, uh, the other day we, we took off to a, a cabin up in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, out in the woods on the river and kind of like even further distanced ourselves on this quarantine thing. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that can be negative in this situation. And I think that it was, it was really getting me down for a while. And, but finally I just, I was sitting there at the river, had my feet in there and I was just looking around me and I was like, you know what, like, I just need to be thankful for what I, what I got right now and be thankful for uh, this opportunity that I get to spend with my kids and, and my wife. Uh, um, we haven't gotten to do this in, in a really long time, you know? Um, and so that's kind of my outlook on it right now. Like, I always know that and, and feel that uh, for me that God provides and, and will continue to provide, um, and that I just need to trust in the plan and, and uh, it'll be back to normal, but I'm, I'm gonna be always grateful for this time I've got to spend with my family. Is your family there with you now in the room? They're, they're not in the room. I'm in my office right now. Um, they're running around. They're always into something, uh, but they're here. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, had a, we had a scare uh, yesterday uh, my son got a um, uh, a fever, so we took him in and he tested uh, negative for flu and strep. So they tested him for COVID, but it came back as negative. So that was wow. I wasn't looking forward to like straight quarantine for fourteen days in <laughs> in the room with a six year old. You know, like uh, so we lucked out on that one. Oh, that's great! That's great! Wow! So. Hey, hey, Scooter, what um, what type of music, what's on your playlist during this pandemic? So you have a lot of time. What are you listening to? Besides your own music, of course. <laughs> Actually, I li I try to not hear any of my music as much as humanly possible. Um, um, I listen to everything. So I'm talking about, uh, I'm a big fan of music from the 70s. Like, every, like I love, like, uh, everything from, you know, Zeppelin and the Rolling Stones to the Leonard Skinner and you know, of course Charlie and Marshall Tucker Band and you know all those guys and then um, uh, you know I I listen to a lot of I, I love Waylon Jennings, um, Randy Travis, um, you know a lot of newer guys that uh, that are out there. Um, I'm trying to like see what else is out there. It's a cool thing about social media is like you can find so much music, uh, but. Uh, uh, been actually listen to a lot of uh, like kind of more Christian praise and worship stuff. I listen to Eminem, Yellow Wolf, um, okay. uh, Metallica. I mean, I'm just I, I love like old school stuff like Sam Cooke and BB King, and uh, you know I I listen to a little bit of everything. Wow, that's quite a variety there. Hey, um, Scooter, uh, it oh, looks I like Charlie... a, uh, the, uh, I think it was, I don't remember if it was BB King that said it, but somebody said this, they said, there's only two types of music, good and bad. You either like it or you don't. <laughs> and that's what I kind of live my life by. Wanted to tell you that Charlotte Ramsey is watching and she says hello from Midlothian. What up? And um, earlier, there was a comment also from Wendy Baltiera. We had mentioned her, but she says, I miss Vicky too. She is awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, my, my, my wife is, uh, she's, she's a, a life of the party kind of <laughs> kind of gal. So, uh, yeah. Awesome. We're having, we're having a good party at the house. So. Never a dull moment here. <laughs> Of course. So <laughs> a lot of us were, you know, trying new things during the pandemic and, um, you know, just trying to stay busy. So 
tell everybody watching which of your songs should they add to your playlist um, for COVID-19 and, and why, what, which one do you recommend? Oh man. Um, for COVID-19 playlist. Uh, you know, there's a song that I don't play anymore at all, but it was on, um, man, what, it was a song called Time is Money, and I don't remember if it was on the last album or the one before it, but it's, it's, it's kind of what I just talked about. It's more of like taking a step back and realizing what's important, um, and everything's going to be all right, you know? But I would say that I would prefer to you to go and uh, download or pre-save Leave It to a Woman, because that's the newest one coming out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, download them all. Spread it to your friends. <laughs> tell, everybody that, tell everybody about it. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and I am on Twitter. I I I'm, I don't really care for for Twitter a whole lot. Uh, so much negativity on there, but um, believe it or not, I even have a TikTok. Uh oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I didn't I didn't mean to have a TikTok. <laughs> but videos are you making on there? Whoops. <laughs> My manager was like, you need TikTok. And I was like, <laughs> you realize like, I'm almost 40. I'm a Marine. Like, I don't need no TikTok. And it's like, you need to keep up with the times, right? So he, he, he makes me a TikTok and uploads a video um, uh, of me singing a song called Country at All to Randy Travis. Randy Travis was over at my house for his 60th birthday. And I made him stay, uh, some ribeyes, him and his wife, Mary. And I played him this song. I didn't realize that my, my manager was filming it. And so he put this song up on TikTok oh and calls me the next day. and was like, by the way, I started to do a TikTok. And your, the first video I posted went viral. Um, and you got like a ton of followers and views on this. Thing. And I was like, what? I don't even know what TikTok is. Let me tell you guys something. Unless you want to go down a rabbit hole for hours and hours and hours uh -huh. do not get on tiktok <laughs> yes. those are wise words <laughs> you will waste more time of your life and you won't even realize you're doing it <laughs> than you could ever possibly imagine <laughs> word to the what i'm just telling you noted scooter brown <laughs> stay away <laughs> Even my wife has stayed away from it. And then she got on it and she was like, I don't know if I should do this or not. Like, this, is just too much. this is too much. So, yeah. Hey, but, hey, Scooter. Sure the business that we're in, you know, you got to get to as many people as you possibly can. Yeah, TikTok has a younger crowd. All, all, the, all the young kids and 20 year olds, 18 year olds are on there. Yeah. And I, I'll tell you this, though, I'm very surprised. Because that's what I thought too, and it is. It is a lot of younger people. Like I have to go through and like, I just I just block people. Like if you're <laughs> under 18 years old, I don't need to see you dancing. Like it's just, I don't need to see you in the belly skirt. Like I don't need to see that. So like, if it's somebody young, like I got my feed kind of weeded out to where like I don't see that stuff pop up anymore. Um, but I'm actually surprised at there is a, a, an older group on there now that is almost taking over TikTok and all the young people are getting mad at them. Uh, it's like this war going on in TikTok, like the, 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 the 30 and up and the, the, the 29 and under, you know, it's like this, like, um, but we're all boomers to the young kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you boomers doing on here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I heard a few times, boo. <laughs> hey scooter so so check this out uh um as a as a marine who served in combat you know firsthand what it's like to sacrifice 
What words of inspiration or thanks do you have for the airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines, Coasties, or all the, the heroes on the front lines fighting the war against COVID-19? What do you have to say to all of them? Um, man, I mean, just, you know, keep the faith, keep your head up, stay positive. Um, uh, you know, kind of one of my messages to people, like, especially to in the combat veteran world is, um, to, to live your life, to honor those who don't get to anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, so like for me, when I got back from Iraq, like, and maybe music had a lot to do with it and my focus on that, but like, I truly believe if we can spread a message of granted, you know, like these people and our friends and our brothers and sisters, like that pay the ultimate sacrifice over, over, you know, overseas, they're never coming back. But I truly feel that they would want us to pursue happiness in the best way possible because that's what we all signed up to die for, right? So, um, and I think I'm getting off track of the, the COVID um, thing, but like that is for my veteran brothers and sisters, like, man, wake up in the morning and, and live your life for something or for somebody. Um, um, we owe it to every person that's ever died to fight for our freedoms, to live our best life, not to drown our sorrows in a bottle of whiskey or pills or drugs. Like we, we owe it to them to, to keep fighting forward and to live our best life as humanly possible. Um, that's how I try to live my life every day. I wake up and I say, how can I be the best me I possibly can today? Um, you know, Sometimes I fail at it. Um, sometimes I, you know, fall off. But like I always have that mindset in here. But you know, to, to everybody out there that's that's on the front line, you know, like in in, in New York and and doing, you know, doing an amazing job at, at what you do. Uh, I mean, we're so grateful and we're so thankful for uh, those people that are in those professions and volunteering their time. Um, uh, you know, I have a cousin that lives in Ohio that you know, volunteered to go to New York City to help. Um, she's a nurse um, uh, with everything. So, I mean, that thing, that's the thing that's always been great about America and Americans is that we're willing to help at the drop of a hat and, it, and no matter what. And um, I'm thankful for everybody that, that's, that's doing something about it. That's, that's and I'm ready to get back to life. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, um, that's such a, that was such a great message. And I, I think everybody who is, is watching with us now appreciates those words uh, from you as, as someone who served for us. So the Army and Air Force Exchange Service, we are, we're mission essential during the pandemic. Our stores are open. Our restaurants are open to take care of the military communities. Do you have any words of hope for our 33,000 associates around the world who are serving during these times? Yeah, um, you know, just like I said before, just keep keep your heads up, stay positive. Um, know that you're doing something that is helping a lot of people. Um, uh, and, uh, um, and just know that we are all, for everybody that is, you know, mission essential in, in situations like this, I mean, um, just thank God for all y'all and, 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 you know, what a lot of people don't realize too, is that, you know, there's, people are taking risks by going into work every day. Um, and knowing that and still going is the definition of heroism. I mean, like, that's like when you know that you're going to go into something, whether it's being, you're being shot at or that, you know, that like, I'm going to go to work and there's probably a good chance that I'm going to catch something like from somebody that I pass along the way. Like um, it takes a lot of guts for somebody to, to continue to do that and not just say, Oh no, not for me. I'm staying home. You know what I mean? Which a lot of people do um, and have no problem with, and that's their prerogative. So I'm just appreciative to everybody that is out there. That's essential. That is still working and still, you know, helping the rest of us, you know, 
try to live our lives as normal as possible. So uh, just thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, and thank you for your service. A quick question: Have you have you heard of the Veterans Online Shopping Benefit? The Veterans Online Shopping Benefit? Yeah. Have you heard of that? I don't think I have. Perfect. Perfect. I just wanted to tie this in because I know you got a lot of veteran followers. So in case yeah. you're not aware, you know, shopmyexchange.com, the NEX, the MCX, the Marine Corps Exchange, all, all these websites back in 2017, the DOD approved us to allow veterans, honorably discharged veterans to shop online tax-free. So in case really? you're aware, you have a benefit. Yes. So you can shop at shopmyexchange.com tax-free. Also this year, 1 Jan 2020, any disabled vet from zero to 90%, because 100% vets are already allowed, or 100% disabled veterans are already allowed. Zero to 90% can actually physically shop in our stores. And that just started this year. I wasn't sure if you're aware of that, so I'm sharing that. So you can share that with all your veteran buddies. And of course, uh, uh, you have the Veterans Online Shopping Benefit, which is online shopping only, tax-free shopping. And then you have the disabled veterans who can actually go to the stores and shop physically in the stores. That's awesome, man. I, I didn't know that. So that's it's good amazing. Reason. You know, we, 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 we push ads on ESPN, the Armed Forces Bowl, and, and every day I still meet people like, bro, we, we could do that? As a, yeah, as a veteran. So take advantage if you get the chance. Jump online, check out the deals. I'm going to get online after we get off of this, this meeting here because I want to see what we can get. <laughs> I'm board shopping now. I'm on my computer. <laughs> Well, uh, no, that's uh, awesome, man. That's that's awesome. Uh, uh, you know, Scooter, it took, um, I'll tell you the truth, it took Mr. Shaw, CEO, he came here, you know, he returned from Vietnam and they, he didn't get, you know, they didn't get a warm welcome, all the Vietnam veterans did not right. get a warm welcome. And he thought, that, Let, let's do something for all these veterans. And so it took about four years for us to pass it through Congress and the DOD. And in 2017, it finally hit. Uh, you know, a great reception. We welcomed home over, Judy, correct me if I'm wrong. Is it about three, four million veterans out there? Is that? I think it was more than that. I think the veterans online shopping was about 18 million veterans. 18. So it was a lot. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. Lots of veterans who can now shop with us online, tax free for life. Veterans have, awesome. veterans have been saving millions on um, taxes alone since this started. I'll tell you what, I could use some savings, man. I'm, I, uh, I'm not gonna lie. I, 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 I typed something on, uh, I think uh, Donald Trump Jr. said something about some of the stimulus or whatever. And I typed back, I was like, man, I've been in business on my own since 2009. I said, I've, I haven't seen a stimulus. I haven't seen a, uh, uh, the, the loan. I haven't seen even a, a, a unemployment benefits. I said, but y'all sure did come in and take my taxes out of my bank account <laughs> last week. <laughs> so anything I can save on, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> did you get your stimulus check? No. <laughs> Hopefully it's coming. No, I'm telling you, I haven't got a stimulus check. I haven't got, because I'm a, I'm a uh, contract worker, basically. Oh. And so that's what we've been always fighting. And so, um, Unemployment hasn't gotten, they said it was going like that contract workers were going to be included, but I mean, they, I mean, they shut down. I mean, it's a substantial amount of money that I've lost touring um, yeah. in the, for over two months. Um, so then, like I said, I just thought it was ironic when I got my look, open up my bank account. I'm like, oh yeah, they took their taxes out. So but, are, are most artists I mean, just, can. oh, Scooter, sorry. No, you're good. Hey, are most artists considered contract workers? You don't work like for a label as an employee. How, how does that, can you, can you delve into that? Just a little, I'm just curious. Um, so most of us are contract workers because um, most of us work for, for ourselves. It's our own, it's our own business, basically. Um, the people that work for us are all 1099, you know, um, employees. So uh, I was, I was with a label at one point, but now I'm into back to being independent. So I'm back just to like, you know, it's just me. And so like when we go do a show, when we get paid out, it's under, you know, my, uh, you know, Scooter Brown band, um, but we're considered contract workers because I mean, basically we're going to different venues all over the country and getting paid from different people and not, not from one place. 
Um, so yeah, it's, it gets a little weird um, for, for the music business world. Uh, it, it's, it's weird in general. It's a weird business. <laughs> it's not for the faint of heart. If any guys think about getting in the music business, think really, really hard. Hey, there you, was there was there was one question, Leah. Were you going to ask it from Ryan Smith about military side gigs? Did you see that one? I do not see that question. Let me. I'm going to ask you, Scooter, since you just kind of brought it up. Um, yeah. Basically, Ryan Smith basically asked. There are a lot of people in the military, you know, who 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 are part time artists on the side, play instruments. What would you suggest they do to keep their passion while serving? Um. Wow, to keep your passion while serving. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know how to answer that because like your passion is your passion. Like you either, you have it or you don't, or you lose it. Um, for me, what, what the guitar and songwriting was like, honestly, it kept me sane. It kept, it kept my like, uh, it just kept me going. I'd wake up early in the morning before Reveille and play my guitar. You know, I'd go eat chow as fast as I could during lunch, just, you know, if we weren't out in the field training, just to get back and play my guitar for 20 or 30 minutes. Like, and then, you know, when we were done with the day, I just would consume myself in playing. I just fell in love with it. Um, uh, you know, and, and I would say like, if you're looking to do music when you get out of the military, um, you know, it's just like anything else. Uh, one of the biggest problems, I, that I see with guys that are former military um, that are wanting to get in the music business is sometimes the use of the military service gets, is a distraction of the music from where the music is. Um, I've actually had personally people reach out and say, hey, give me your opinion on this. And I'll say, well, you know, it's a good song, guitar playing needs worked on, you need to practice here, here and there. Um, you know, hey, could you think you could get me in front of so and so? And I'll be like, honestly, this isn't this isn't a good enough product yet. But if you hone it in and practice some more, whatever, like I can try to help in some form or fashion. And a lot of people come back and be like, well, I'm a I'm a veteran, I'm a combat vet, so I should at least get a, get a chance to be in front of somebody. I'm like, no. At the end of the day, like your music has to speak for itself, like. Yeah. It doesn't matter, like, thank you for your service, um, but that doesn't guarantee you a spot um, just because you served. And a lot of people do that. And I, I see it firsthand. Um, and it's, it doesn't matter where you come from or whatever, like at the end of the day in the music business, the music has to speak for itself. If people aren't listening to it, if people aren't buying tickets, if people aren't coming to, to, to your shows, then you have to have some worth and create that worth on your own. Um, a, a lot of people just don't want to do the hard work to get to that point. Um, today, like it's almost like as a musician, I almost don't look at myself as an artist musician anymore. I look at myself as a social media, media entity that happens to play music. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a, it's a different world that we live in, you know, you got to create something that people want to follow. Um, and in my military service is one of the things that people follow, but I've also like, you know, uh, I try to put out there like my two youngest are adopted. So adoption is one of my big platforms, the helping veterans, um, uh, uh, child sex trafficking. Um, that's another one of my platforms. Uh, and human trafficking and so like you know it's doing other things besides music and getting people to want to follow you in your life but you ha also happen to play this thing right here and you know sell music along along the way and and and, and have shows so um anyway i might have went off on a tangent on that one but i just see it too often where military guys come to me expecting uh expecting something or a leg up because of the military service but if the music's not good enough then it's just not good enough if that makes sense so practice is what i'm saying practice be the best at what you do and come with a product that you would put your life on 
Because if you don't come to the table with that product and don't have the confidence in it, then nobody's going to want to talk to you because of it. Let the work speak for itself. <laughs> yeah. And you may not like my music. That's all right. You know, people aren't going to like what you do sometimes. That's cool. If everybody did, it'd be boring world. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of artists that, that are my friends that I don't listen to their music. I'm not a fan of it but i love them you know what i mean like they're good people um i don't expect people to like my music i'm just grateful for the ones that do awesome thank you again scooter so um just one last time let me take a look at the comments here uh john hutt he said inspiring words scooter thank you um, you're getting a lot of likes and loves on our, on our live feed. Um, so just again, thank you so much. Yeah, I, I appreciate you guys having me on. And, uh, like I said, it's, it's a treat to be able to still get to perform and, and, and spread the word via, uh, social media and, and technology because, uh, you know, that's what we do. We live for it. We love, we live to to perform for people and, and play our music and draw emotions. So um, thank you for giving me that opportunity this morning. Hey, we're not, we're not done yet, Scooter. All right, well, hey, if you, I'm here all, I ain't got nowhere to go. We don't either. We don't either. We're, we're gonna stay here all day. <laughs> hey, there's one song you played at the Opry, uh, Country At All. Can you tell, yeah. uh, tell us a little bit about that, please? Yeah. Um, so I'm not gonna lie, I wrote the song with, with my buddy, Tim Montana. Um, and uh, we were kind of sitting in his garage one day and I am personally not a huge fan of a lot of the um, top 40 kind of pop country. Um, I feel like country music's kind of gotten a little, it's gotten a little uh, uh, for, for my taste. I'm not saying that that music shouldn't be there. I'm just saying that maybe they should be cool if they could open up a little bit more to some more tra traditional uh, music, country music. And so we were listening to the radio in his garage and I was like, what is this? Is this, are you on the country station? He was like, yeah. I was like, man, I used to think I was pretty country, but if this is what country is, I guess I ain't country at all. And he was like, grab your guitar, let's write that. <laughs> and so uh, we came up with this song here and. We actually debuted it on the Grand Ole Opry on our first time at the Grand Ole Opry. And I was really scared because we're kind of kind of talking a little trash about country radio. In WSM, the Opry is a radio show. So I was like, I hope we get invited back after this. And then, you know, like, then this is all right. Uh, but we ended up getting a standing ovation for this song. And uh, I'll play it for you. It's, uh, it's called Country at All. I live my life like a campfire song Was born on the mountain back where I belong and I followed my heart and brought my old guitar Chasing down dreams in these honky-tonk bars now who in the hell put this music on my radio? Where'd all the outlaws and good old boys go? But this is what country sounds like to you all. Well, I guess I ain't country at all. I found a city where my heroes once roamed. I guess all the cowboys eased on back home. But I'm proud to be baptized on three chords and the truth. But all I hear lately is one chord and a loop. Now who in the hell this music on my radio Where'd all the outlaws and good old boys go 
This is what country sounds like to you all. Well, I guess I ain't country at all. I guess I ain't country at all. There you have. <laughs> Scooter Brown. Thank you. thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, have you guys heard that song? Um, uh, you guys familiar with like Black Rifle Coffee Company? Yeah, I heard of I heard of that company. Hey, they yeah. she, was that the company when we were talking to? Are, are they in Chicago? They're not in Chicago, are they? Where are they? Why are they so familiar? Well, uh, they were in Salt Lake City, Utah, but now they're kind of like based more out of the uh, Texas area. Okay. It sounds anyway, super familiar. Yeah. The, 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 the two guys own it. One was a, a Ranger and another one was a Green Beret. And um, they make some of the most funny videos. Um, <laughs> and anyway, they just put out this video. They just put out this video. It's called the Quarantine Song. And if you want to get a laugh, uh, y'all should check that out uh, and send people to that. I actually did a little cameo in the video for it. Uh, oh, really? but it's the quarantine song? That's what you said it's called? We'll check it yeah. out for sure. Yeah, you guys got to check it out. And it's and, and those guys are awesome. They, they hire veterans. They're they're veteran-based company. Uh, they do Matt Best and Tim Montana? Yeah, yeah. Found it. And, and Tim Montana is the one I just wrote that song with, the country at all. So they're friends of mine, but you guys gotta you guys gotta check that out and and share it. I think you'll get a kick out of it. <laughs> Will do. You got it. <laughs> hey, Scooter, thank you so much for coming on. We greatly appreciate it. It's been it's been an honor having you on here. Um, but before we go, this is your chance, right? Tell us more. Uh, let people know your plugs, especially for your social media accounts. Tell us more about Basecamp Forty. Any other worthy charities that you feel people should be aware of? This is your chance, please. Cool. Um, well, first of all, thank you guys for having me on. I truly appreciate it. Um, thank you for everything that you guys are doing. Um, if you're checking, if you want to check out what we're doing, uh, scooterbrownband.com is the website. Um, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. Um, <laughs> on, on the. <laughs> On the, the Instagram and Facebook, uh, look for the blue check mark because we do get, we, for some reason, we get really bad um, multiple accounts of people pretending to be us and uh, it's obnoxious. So blue check mark, um, look, be looking for those. Um, also, our music is available pretty much anywhere, uh, Spotify, Pandora, uh, Apple, Amazon, all that stuff. You can check it out. And, and all those links and stuff are at our website. So if you just go to okay. scooterbrownband.com, you pretty much find anything and everything you need. Um, our tour schedule, um, there's still dates up, uh, whether they happen or not at this point, we don't know. Uh, but um, also, like I said at the beginning, uh, Base Camp 40 Warriors in the Wild, the website there is bc40hunts.org. Um, you can check that out. You can nominate a veteran for a hunt or a fishing trip if you know somebody that's having a hard time or they just needs to get away. Um, you can you can plug that in there. Um, and then uh, trying to think of uh, if there's any other shameless plugs I can throw at you real quick. Uh, just remember that our uh, new single is available for pre-purchase and pre-download. Uh, spread the word and we appreciate it. I love that song. I hope we can see you live soon. Thank you for spending some time with us today. We really appreciate you. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Yes. Thank you, Scott. Thank you for your service and for all that you're doing for veterans. Um, we, we really appreciate that. And thanks for coming on with us. Absolutely. Hey, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Scott. Uh, Semper Fi, all right. I'm not in the Marines, but Semper Fi. Semper Fi, baby. <laughs> you heard that from an airman. I love it. No Record that. No. No. Sorry, I got love. I got love for the Marines. Uh, we hey, we're you. all on the same team, brother. That's right. One team, one fight. That's it. Take care, bye, brother. guys. Bye.
Thanks again. See you guys later. Thank you.